Earlier today, while I was preparing for a mentoring and coaching call that is set up for tomorrow morning with one of our pastors in another nation in a, in a restricted area of the world, um, I was praying through and uh, looking at some of the topics we're going to talk about. And I thought some of it might help all of us who are leading a church, planting a church, doing campus ministry, or in any part of vocational ministry and spiritual leadership. And uh, I have the pages here that were, it was a printout from our topics to discuss tomorrow with this leader. And um, it was interesting, he laid out the vision for his nation and the churches, the Every Nation churches he oversees. And it's a compelling vision of uh, what he and the leadership team in his nation see uh, for the coming 10 years. And um, I won't go through all that, but part of it has to do with the number of leaders that will need to be equipped and empowered in order to reach all of the new cities and the new campuses around that nation. And here are some of the, um, some of the preparation points that he and the team have in this vision statement. This pastor and his leadership team have targeted over two dozen cities, each of those cities with major campuses in their nation. And so they're looking for 26 leaders that will need to be identified and equipped and empowered uh, over the next decade to see this vision come to pass. And uh, uh, here are some of the qualifications that the kind of leaders are looking for. At least three years of vocational ministry experience. A strong marriage if they're married. Um, ministry skills, primarily evangelism and discipleship. Those are pretty good start points for any kind of ministry, uh, evangelism and discipleship. Next, unity with the every nation, family, mission, vision, and values. And then I love this last one, a willingness to be in jail for the sake of Christ. So when we start thinking about qualifications to be a church planter or a campus missionary and pioneer a campus ministry on a new campus or pioneer a church in a new city, uh, we need ministry experience. We need a good, uh, solid marriage if we're married. We need ministry skills like evangelism. We need to be in unity philosophically with our broader uh, global family. And we need to be willing to go to jail for the sake of Christ. I'm not sure that shows up on most of the list, uh, but at the very least, we need candidates for campus ministry and church planting who are willing to sacrifice and are willing to pick up a cross and follow Jesus no matter the cost. In most of our nations, going to jail for the sake of the gospel is not really in the mix. It's not going to happen. But what is the area of sacrifice we need to be willing to make for the sake of the gospel in the advancement of God's kingdom? This document goes on, and, um, and uh, this leader is asking me multiple questions about uh, how to make the vision that I, I am convinced is really from God, how to make that and help and work to see that become reality. And, and here's the first thing that I noted, uh, and I wrote notes to myself for my call tomorrow. Uh, it, it goes back to Ephesians 3.20. That was a scripture that was quickened to me, and I want to read it. Um, we, we all are familiar with this passage. Verse 20, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Ephesians 3.20 says, God, He's able to do far more. And those two words, far more. Uh, that's what I was thinking about when I was thinking about my friend's vision for his nation and his region. That we can set a vision that we really feel is from God, but God is able to do far more. Whatever your vision is, doesn't matter how big your dream is, it doesn't matter what the opposition is. It doesn't matter what's lacking. It doesn't matter if it costs this much and you have this much income. None of that matters. What matters is God is able to do far more. Far more than what? Far more than we ask or think. So here are a couple of thoughts I wrote down for my friend for my coaching call tomorrow. Number one, God is able to do more. No matter how big our vision is, God is able to do more. So think big, dream big, don't put any limits because God is able to do more. Number two, we have to ask. 
God will do far more than we ask or think. But first, we have to ask for God to do the vision and more. Our part is to ask. We don't have to strain ourselves as if we can do a miracle. We take that vision to God because we feel like it came from God. And we pray and we ask. And then whatever we ask, God is able to do more. Number three, we must think. God will do far more than we ask or think. There is a thinking part of being a spiritual leader, a strategizing part, intentionally making plans. And and, and rarely does a vision roll out exactly according to the plan and exactly according to the strategy. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't make plans and it doesn't mean we shouldn't have a strategy. Sometimes The rollout is faster and broader than what our strategic plan said. Sometimes it's slower, but we still work according to the plan and the strategy. And then we trust that God will do more than we ask, more than we think. And then number four, I want you to notice the words. It says, who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask, according to the power that works within us. There's a we and an us. We ask and think. God works with the power that's within us. Both of those are plural. And so to see vision become reality, number one, we have to trust God. He's able. Number two, we have to ask in prayer. Number three, we have to think and strategize. But number four, we have to do it in community. Vision works best in community. There's a we and an us. Uh, I'm not Moses going to the mountain, coming back to the tablets, and neither are you or any of us. We are called to work in team. We're called to work in community. We think best in community. We pray best in community. We lead best when we do it in community and team. So let me encourage all of you. God is able. No matter how big the dream is, no matter how big the challenge is, God is able to do far more abundantly beyond what you ask or think. So ask big and think big and trust God.